All right, let's look at margin accounts then. Um, so a margin account is an account that allows customers uh, to borrow money from their broker dealer to buy more securities, right? That, that's the idea. They're borrowing money from their broker dealer and they're going to use that money. They have the access and ability anyways to use that money to buy, to buy more securities in their account than they would be able to buy if they only use their own cash. So, you know, this increases the potential to gain money and increases the potential to lose money, right? You're borrowing money from somebody else to buy more securities. If those investments don't do well, you know, you could lose more money. Um, so margin trading is, is only suitable for people who understand it and have the ability to, to take on um, risk. Let me fix my camera. Sorry about that. It keeps dropping on me. Um, so when you borrow money from your broker dealer, you are paying interest on that money that you borrowed. It's considered a margin loan. Um, cash and securities in the account are used for a collateral on margin loans. Um, so now when it comes to a margin account, when, when your initial, you know, when you open your margin account, when you make the first trade in the margin account, um, Regulation T requires you to have at least 50% of your own money in the account. So that purchase that you make, at least 50% of that, that, has, that those securities has to be purchased with your own money. The remaining 50% can be borrowed um, from, from the broker dealer. Okay, so Reg T requires an initial 50% deposit requirement of the amount purchased or sold short because short sales also take place in a margin account the balance can be maintained. Now, if the initial purchase is for a low amount, $2,000 or less, then the initial margin requirement is 100% of the value of the securities traded in the account, all right? So usually it's the initial margin requirement is 50%, but if it's for a low amount, $2,000 or less, it's 100%. And then if it's the initial uh, amount is between 2,000 and 4,000, somebody is required to have at least $2,000 in their account. So for instance, if your initial purchase in the margin account is for $3,000 worth of securities, you have to have at least $2,000 of your own money uh, in the account. Once you get beyond $4,000 though, that's when the 50% regulation T initial margin requirement applies. Um, so that's the initial requirement. Now there's also an ongoing minimum maintenance requirement and that requirement is equity of at least 25% of the value of the securities you own in the account. So in a long margin account, a security in which uh, an account in which you buy the securities and own them, you must have at least 25% equity of that long uh, market value. Now, if your equity drops below 25% of LMV, and we're gonna talk about what LMV and equity means in a couple minutes here. If it drops below 25% of LMV, then the broker can make what's known as a margin call to the customer. And the margin call requires the customer to deposit more funds in the account, um, or the broker dealer could sell off the securities in the account to help meet uh, the shortfall. Um, all right, so let's look at long positions in margin accounts, um, meaning when you purchase securities within a margin account. So when an investor buys shares on margin, we say the investor is long the shares, right? We talked about that when we talked about options, as far as you know, the long, meaning somebody who owns the security. Um, so even though the security is not 100% paid for, right, you're borrowing money from your broker dealer in a margin account, you're still considered to be the owner. So the value of the securities in the long margin account is called long market value or LMV. You'll see this acronym LMV, that's what it means, long market value. So the LMV is basically the market price of the security times the number of shares that the investor owns. So the total value of the security that he owns. Okay, so that's LMV. Equity in the account then, we're kind of running through some definitions here. Equity in the account then is the value of the securities that the customer has paid for, right? The value of the securities that the customer actually has paid for. And then the third term that, you, that you'll see in this equation at the bottom, and it's important to know, is debit balance. That's the money that the customer has borrowed from the broker dealer. Okay, so LMV, value of the securities in the account, equity, basically represents what the, the customer has paid for, debit balance, the money the customer has borrowed from the broker dealer. So important equation as it applies to a long margin account, LMV minus debit balance equals equity because you're gonna use this equation potentially on questions that are asking you, you know, how much equity somebody has in the account and or related to that, whether they need to deposit more equity in the account to meet that minimum maintenance requirement of 25% of LMV. 
So I would definitely remember this equation. It's very important for margin account type questions. Um, and we're gonna look at some examples going forward here. We're gonna use this equation um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so, so example, say Sharon buys a thousand shares of XYZ in her margin account. I'm not sure about the fun part, but in her margin account when XYZ is trading at $25. So she puts the required 50% equity into the account. And so the following equation represents her margin account. Pretty straightforward, hopefully in basic. LMV of $25,000, 25 shares times $25 a share times 1,000 shares, minus debit balance of 12,500, right? She deposits the required equity. That means she borrows the additional 50%. So that's 12,500 she borrows equals equity of $12,500. 25,000 minus 12,500 equals 12,500. So there you go, standard setup right there. Um, so let's continue with this. So what happens? So the values of the securities are gonna change, right? Security prices don't stay the same. They're not static, they go up and down. Um, so when the value of the securities in the long margin account changes, the LMV and the equity will automatically change. The debit balance won't. At least for most of the questions that you're gonna see on the test, they borrow that money from the broker dealer and that's gonna be the money they borrowed. It doesn't change. The debit balance stays the same. However, when LMV goes up, um, um, uh, so, so when L LMB, yeah, deb debit, debit balance and margin balance. Yeah, it's the same. That's the same thing. It's typically going to be called, uh, going to call, be called either debit balance or debit register. You might also see it referred to um, on the exam. But yes, you're, you're talking about the same thing. The question was debit and margin balance is the same. And the answer is yes. Um, okay, so LMB will rise or fall depending on the market value of the securities. And so the equity is going to also fluctuate, right? If you look at the equation, right, if the middle value in the equation stays the same and the value on the left changes, the value on the right is also going to change along with the value on the left. So the equity will also fluctuate what will still be different uh, the difference between the LMV and the debit balance. So Sharon's, for example, now let's, we're going back to Sharon. So her XYZ shares increase in price uh, to $30 a share. So her LMV then rises to $30,000 and her debit balance remains. The amount she borrowed from the broker is the same, remains at 12,500. So now her equity is 17,500. So just remember the equation, remember how to apply these things and, uh, and follow the process. Um, okay, so now, hang on a minute. I think I missed something there. Nope, I didn't. Um, so to meet the minimum maintenance requirement for a long margin account, the customer, remember, we said this earlier, but they need to maintain equity of 25% of the long market value of all times. So equity needs to be at least 25% of LMV at, long, at all times. If it's not, if it goes below that number, if the equity in the account goes below the 25% level, then the customer is gonna to need to deposit additional funds or securities in the account to get it back up to that 25% level. So for example, now let's go back to Sharon, um, say the value of XYZ plunges to 15 a share. So our LMV is now $15,000. Her debit balance is the same. So it's 12,500. Now her equity is 2,500. Okay, remember, she's got to have at least 25% of that $15,000 LMV in equity in her account. 25% of 15,000 is $3,750. So that's her minimum maintenance requirement. So she's got to have at least that much in equity in her account. And if she doesn't, she's got to deposit enough to bring her equity up to that level. So look at that, her, the equity in her account is only $2,500. So she's got to put uh, $1,250 in her account to bring that equity back up to the 25% the minimum maintenance requirement. Um, this, is, this is a type of question you might see on the test where they, where they give you a scenario like this, um, you know, the, the account started off at this value, you know, it had this equity, this debit balance, and now, now the securities drop in value to this much, how much equity does the investor need to deposit in the account? So understanding this equation and following this equation and rem remembering that equity needs to be 25% of LMV, that's how you go about answering uh, a question like that. Um, now, as if long margin accounts aren't confusing enough, you also might have to deal with short positions in a margin account. So remember, a short sale, when you borrow securities from a broker dealer, sell them, and then you have to replace those shares and return them to the broker dealer. Now, a short sale has to happen in a margin account. That's the only way if you're selling short, has to be in the margin account. When a short sale occurs, the investor needs to deposit the money from the short sale 
plus at least 50% of the short market value, so the value of the securities that they just sold in the short sale, um, into their margin account. So that means the investor has to put 150% of the value of the securities in their, in their account. So say you short, you short securities, uh, you know, $5,000 worth of securities, okay? You need to put that $5,000 you receive from the short sale needs to go in your margin account. And then you need to put $2,500 of your own money also in the margin account. So 150% of the value of the shorted securities. The relevant equation for a short margin account and one that again, you should memorize uh, credit balance. The credit balance is the total amount of money that you put that goes in the margin account associated with that sale minus SMV the short margin value, what you, what you shorted the securities for, equals equity. So note that the credit balance is going to be 150% of the SMV and the equity is going to be the difference uh, between them. So remember this equation for short uh, margin account. Credit balance, again, credit balance is going to be the total amount of money that you put in your account. You shorted the securities for X price and then 50% of that value added to that. That's the credit balance minus the SMV uh, equals equity. Um, so here's an example. So Ali opens a margin account and shorts 500 shares of ATCQ at $50. The SMV of the shares is $25,000, $50 times 500 shares. He receives this amount and deposits it into his account. So he must also deposit equity that's equivalent to 50% of the value of the securities. So $12,500. Um, this additional amount is represented in the equity column in the equation you see below. So his credit balance is $37,500. Um, um, his SMV, $2,500, his equity is $12,500. So that's when he sets up his short margin account, that's, uh, that's what you do. Um, okay, so now let's look at what happens when the price goes down and the price goes up of the securities in a short margin account. So remember, when the value of shorted securities goes, goes down, that's actually good for the short investor, right? They bought it at X price, they wanna buy it back at a lower price. So when the price of the securities drops, that's actually good. So the value of the shorted securities in the margin account declines, the account's SMV de uh, decreases while its credit balance remains the same. And so that means that the equity is going to go up. So um, that's good, right? Equity goes up, always a good sort of outcome for the account holder. So let's look at, let's continue with Ali. So remember his account in which the SMV for shares of ATCQ is 25,000. Um, say the price of ATCQ goes down to $40 a share. So his SMV is now going to be $20,000. As you can see, the, you see the equation there. Uh, his credit balance is still $37,500. So that means his equity has gone up to $17,500. So the price of the, the SMV drops, the equity goes up in a short margin account uh, based on the equation you know there. 